This is Cox on Tap. We are at our first brew day and uh, I'm, I'm doing a lot of cleaning. I have cleaned the sparge water heater using this high performance cleaner. I have cleaned the grain farther. Nice. The counterflow chiller and the recirculation pipe. I've still got to clean the fermenter and tidy up this mess. <laughs> There is quite a lot of cleaning to do. Um, I imagine you don't have to clean the sparge water tank that often, but definitely the grain farther after every brew, so it's just something that I'm gonna have to get used to. Where's my wife? Currently using the grain farther app to input all the uh, fermentables, hops, and our yeast, and then this basically tells us how much water we need to use, and then I, th I presume it sets certain things up on the grain father to just tell us when to do things. Oh, you hope so. Oh, I hope so. It's not going to handhold us, but it will just give us notifications that it's time to boil, it's time to add hops. Uh, that's my understanding of it anyway. Like, could be completely different. We'll find out, I guess. <laughs> also, we're going to have a lot of beers while doing this, which is my main reason for joining in. Yeah. And uh, this is a particularly nice one from Brewdog and Northern Monk Collaboration Beer, which is one of our faves. So this is a New England IPA, and that's totally what I'm about. Mm. Love that. Love that taste. Nipa. Here's something I thought about uh, this whole thing. Like, it could taste like shit, but no one will ever know. <laughs> and, like, all these, like, brew tubers, when they sip the beer... Mmm, that is juicy. It could taste like mud, but who will ever know? <laughs> I'll be the one giving the game away, because uh, my mouth and face says it all if I don't like something. <laughs> yeah, right, back to me, Matt. What are you doing, Leighton? Pretending I'm Jesus and turning water into beer. <laughs> Target 60 degrees. Wow, we're going to get to the top of this. So we got the mash, and now I'm going to mash those grains. Been absolutely mashed. Can't reach the bottom. Prepare for mash. Fill the grain fiber brewing system with 19.43 litres of water, then press the button below or set on the control box to begin. Isn't that great? And it's got my recipe name, Plain Hazy. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Plain Hazy. Right, where are we at with the... Um, where's the... Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the uh, the markers to tell me how many like litres are in there. 20 litres in there. So maybe we should take some out. The more water we have, the less ABV we'll get. So do we want higher alcohol or more of a session beer? Mash temperature reach. Add grain now. Oh, fuck. It's making me nervous. <laughs> Before we start, we must be here. Go on one of my faves today. Camden Pale. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Friday beers. Nothing beats it. I just got a mouth full of froth in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to replace the inner basket and make sure the pipe is fully extended. Is it extended late? Boop! Like that? Yeah. Oh, we can feel the heat. So that when we pour our grains in now, there's no grains going down the pipe. Okie dokie. Getting in your beer. Right, let's do this. I'll bring that here. That looks heavy. Add grain. You're just like breaking it up for now. Man, to think this will create beer. I think it'd be like porridge or something. Hot water breaks down 
the grains and starching them, and that's what makes the alcohol. It does smell like porridge though. <laughs> Which is good, it's not something horrible putting you It's a bit dusty, isn't it? <laughs> My house is going to be ruined. <laughs> mm, that's lovely. <laughs> what does it smell like? Porridge! <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah. So I'm pushing this top plate on to the grain bed. There we go, nicely does it. Why to the grain bed? Uh, because the instructions told me to do so. <laughs> I not tell you why. <laughs> uh, make sure the te plate is level so it does not tilt during operation. Okay, let's go in on. Now, so, fit the pipe. What, what's this pipe called? Recirculation pipe. The recirculation. <laughs> Circulation! <laughs> Circulation <laughs> pipe! Okay. We've got the recirculation pipe going in there. So, press start mash. I didn't even touch it. There you go. Is that all from the app? Yeah. Clever. Look, it's got the little timer on here. It tells us how long it's going to take. Um, and tells us a little bit more. So we've got a 60 minute mash. And so we don't do anything now for 60 minutes. Oh, that means so we've got an hour, so we can, we can eat, yeah. Oh yeah, thank God. Stick. <laughs> Just had our first crisis, although I don't know if it is a crisis. So we had the wort overflowing the overflow inlet, and uh, I was worried that grains were then getting down into into the bottom. So I just restarted things, took the plate out and reset it because it started to slip down. Yeah, worry that's ruined the beer, but I'm sure a lot of people have these day one worries that actually it doesn't matter. So just to keep the work from overflowing, the valve is just slightly closed just to control that flow, which you should probably do anyway, I think. But um, yeah, put in the comments what you do. Maybe it's the grain bale. I've got 5.9 kilos, which I don't think is anything excessive. I think the grain father can take up to 9 kilos. Uh, so it should be fine. Maybe I'm overthinking and over worrying. Let me know. Oh, steamed up. So the wort has gone a bit red now. Might be that crystal or flaked oats that we had in. One of them was really red, if I remember. A little bit like this beer. And we are ready for sparging now. Oh, that's super heavy. Jesus. <laughs> so all that good stuff is draining down now. Okay. It's also quite heavy, isn't it? We are currently in the sparging phase. So we have got through six litres of sparging. We have now finished sparging. I'm just letting that drain through. And we are now into the boil. It's got 60 minutes of boiling, and then we're gonna to start to add, well, during this process, we're gonna to start to add our hops to get our lovely, lovely aromas. Let's see what we've got. We've got a bit of Simcoe, Citra, and Mosaic. It's bubbling away. This is everything we've collected from sparging, and the grains. Are you allowed to touch it? Hema no. no, 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 no. It's got no. like a weird like film on top, hasn't it? Yeah, well, that's the proteins, and we gotta, we gotta get that in there. Once we hit our target temperature of 100, and it starts boiling. We have reached boil. Okay. And now it's gonna boil for 60 minutes. It's getting uh, close to oh. the top. Yeah, and it said that to stop a boil over, just give it a pat down or a little bit of a stir every, uh, oh that looks black, <laughs> uh, every every now and again, every every time it looks like it's starting to get a bit cray, 
Just, just, just put it back into place. That's looking really red. I, d I think it was that crystal that we added before, wasn't it? Listen, if you have a look, that crystal. That's got like a really, like ready texture to it. it Smelt nice though. Yeah, it's not really nice. We foolishly didn't think it would take this long. Um, just because I didn't read out all those, oh, this is going to be 60 minutes and this is going to be 60 minutes. I thought it was just going to be like a couple of hours, but no, it's actually like, it's it? probably going to take about six hours total. It's, it's quarter past 11. Yeah. Uh, and see, now I'm going to go to bed. Yeah, Rianne needs to get to bed. She's been working all week. I am like, I have no work, so it doesn't matter. This is my work. This is my life now. Videos and beer. Um, but we're now at the... Hop additions during the boil. So we are going for Citra and Simcoe. We've got 30 grams of each in there. Boop. I have just put the hops in and wow, the aroma in the room, the smell, ah, oh, just insane. It smells amazing, just uh, Citra and Simcoe. We've got five minutes left on this boil. Okay, so we are done with our boil and right now we're just sanitizing uh, the work through the cattle flow chiller. I've got it hooked up to the tap in my kitchen because that's just the most convenient for me. Um, to the hot spider out and that is looking minging. But it, I need to get out of this room because it's stinking. <laughs> uh, don't know what I was expecting really. Uh, I've still got like a couple of pages to go through this guide. I'll go through this one. This one, and then we're into the fermenter. And then I can go to bed. <laughs> it's like quarter past twelve now. Here's a here's a tip for all you on your first go. Do it earlier. I was just doing the whirlpool, and uh, I believe I don't know uh, that that draws all the sort of like oils and aromas out of the hops into the water and um, you know, it gives you that hoppy juicy flavour. Okay, so we have finished transferring it to the fermenter and we now have a good solid 17 litres. I've got to put our yeast in, let's smack that. So I finally uh, got all the beer in the fermenter, got it coming out between 18 and 22 degrees. The yeast uh, that I'm using, Y yeast 1056 American Pale, um, said it was good at that temperature. Got the fermenter targeted at 18 degrees. Just took um, an original gravity reading and I'm supposed to be around 1068. 1062 or something. Yeah, pretty, pretty happy with that. This unit is sealed. I need to go to bed. <laughs>